I mean, I, I can't complain. It, it, um, I feel like I'm in a same similar boat. I, I again, I don't really check up on people, or people yeah. don't check up on me. At the end of the day, if you get in contact with me, we can have a full blown conversation, as if we never stop talking. It, right. it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't hurt me. It doesn't take anything away from me because, again, mm-hmm. like there's value always being added and never really taken away. Mm-hmm. It's when value is being taken away, or when you feel like something's being taken away from you, or you're building this resentment because you can't do this thing. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Today is December 14th. We're going to say 12th. That's the weekend. Um, So we got a Monday, nice gloomy Monday. It's chilly. It's raining. Not too bad of a day, but it's not great. But that's not a problem, man. You got us. You got some shots, some info shots. So, you know, you can come chill with us. So a quick disclaimer. Conversation between Mike for entertainment purposes only. Whatever we say here, you can take it at your discretion. Um, obviously, you know, we like doing stuff and we like talking about it here, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do it. You can just listen to what we have to say. If you think it appeals to you, then by all means, go ahead and try to apply it. If it doesn't, skip right over it. And that's it. Absolutely. Uh, welcome back, everybody. It's a new week. Um, but yeah, there was a, a bit of snow in there earlier over here. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the snow. Yeah. That was, that was snow nice. Cool. It's been a while. Yeah, it finally feels the winter. It's actually one of mm-hmm. my favorite seasons of the month. I mean, of the year. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, on the on the. Well, on the- I mean, sooner or later, we're gonna get to that point where the in the months we're gonna have different seasons. We we'll have all four seasons in one month. Watch. Fucking global warming. I mean, this has been that's basically December. We've had December hit highs of like sixties, and then we had mm-hmm. snow the other day. So you know, we're getting there. Spring. It's been crazy. Yeah, we can we can definitely talk about the global warming if you want. Later yeah. On. But um, sure, for but today, uh, we're going to stick to our schedule on the personal development. Uh, we have no one cares on fitness, using food apps, and on finance. How many stocks should you have on in a portfolio? Mm-hmm. All right. So really interesting topics to start the week uh, with positive. Uh, this is finals weeks for a lot of kids. So best of luck. And we can jump in into personal development. No one cares. What do you think about that? Man, it sounds uh, at face value, it sounds pretty depressing. Um, <laughs> sounds a little emo, you know. But um, I guess at, at a certain degree, that like the whole point of us or the whole point of the topic is to try to get to the point of like, listen, you're gonna you can do whatever you want because nobody's really cares about what you actually do. You shouldn't really be overthinking about what other people think of you. Mm-hmm. But again, at face value, it seems a little gloomy. Doesn't seem particularly. You know, good. It doesn't. It doesn't give me positive vibes. Well, no. It, it, I feel like it depends on the mentality that you uh, um you go around it. Mm-hmm. I come up with this topic, and you're calling me emo. But <laughs> now, nah, um, so what I think is, no one cares. Is the mentality that no one really cares what you do in your life because it's your life. You're the only one who should care about it. Uh, it's not about being depressing or just like kind of like go into that route. It's mainly about uh, kind of understanding that no one, absolutely no one is going to give a fuck of what you do today, what you do tomorrow, what decisions are you taking it. Maybe they're going to listen to you and they're going to be like, yeah, I'm happy to you. Oh, no, that's not good for you. But ultimately, it's that fact that that decision or whatever you do, it's, um, you know, have on them is going to be minimal. So no one really cares about what you do. And that's a mentality that you should go about like every single day. Um Definitely has been a game changer for me because it depends on whatever I'm doing. I think about it. I'm like, is this going to have a positive or negative effect on my life? And if it has a positive, I, I go about it. I'll be like, okay, cool. I'm going to do it. But ultimately, I'm not thinking about like my friends or like, well, actually, that sounds bad. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's I, what I'm saying. <laughs> it's, it's a bit selfish, but this life, you got to be selfish, uh, in my opinion. On, but yeah. So I feel like there's a dichotomy <laughs> with, with the, the whole topic in itself, right? Because uh-huh. the purpose is for you to kind of balance the selfish and the selfless aspects of just being alive, being human, right? So it's not that people don't care about you or what you do. It's just that, like you were saying, it depends on the effect that it has on you, on, on them, whatever you do. So if you make a 
hypothetically say you make a choice that affects a lot of people or people within your immediate circle, they're going to care whether it's a positive or negative thing. That's all yeah. subjective, but they're going to care uh, for like short period of time. They're going to care for like that moment. Then they're going to go about their lives and they're going to mm -hmm. completely ignore it. Honestly. Mm -hmm. So that's um, what I think about um, this topic came in recent, I think I was talking to one of my sisters about it, a similar topic about it, and it instantly come, came to my head like, damn, like, no one really cares, because like, the only person that's going to care about it is going to be myself, because it's my life, and yeah, because like, even the decisions that I'm making right now uh, regarding my career, regarding my school, regarding my personal life and love life, it's ultimately affecting me and not, mm -hmm. not, not anybody else. So no one really cares. I can yeah, talk about it with well, somebody and, you know, they're going to listen to it. But are they going to really care? Uh, personally? So long as it doesn't affect them. Yeah. Like, personally, if somebody tells me, like, a secret or whatever they're going through, I'm going to listen to them. I'm not the person that I'm going to be like, oh, my God, do this or do that. Like, I don't really care. <laughs> like, you doing something, like, going to a new business. Like, my friend actually started a new business yesterday on on my country like in ecuador and i was like yo best of the luck and whatever do i care that I'm, I'm proud of her of course but do i really care about like what she's doing no because it's her life and i need to do like it's not a competition between me and her i'm putting something you know yeah for sure no it should always be between you yourself damn, and i damn that definitely sounds like a selfish bitch <laughs> no anyways but again like the whole point is to not get caught up in like the things that you do in your life, it, it should always be revolved around the way it's going to affect other people. Because yeah. that's where people, you know, they get stuck. They're like, I can't do this because if I do this, this will potentially have a negative consequence that will maybe make people not like me or put right. people in, in, in a weird situation. Like, hypothetically, you want to go live on your own or you want to go away for college mm -hmm. and your parents mm -hmm. are like, no, uh, we don't want that. At a certain degree, you know, it's... Maybe they're, they want, they're caring for your safety or they're, they're trying to keep a close eye on you. But on the other hand, it's your life and you need to kind of make that decision to, you know, explore and grow up. And at the end of the day, if your parents don't like it, then it doesn't matter because it's your decision. And they'll care in the moment, right? But at some point, obviously, if you don't do some crazy shit and end up getting yourself killed or something, you know, you grow from that experience and you'll come right. back a better person and in that you can kind of foster a better relationship with your parents as opposed to just being like you know they hate you or you hate them because mm. there's this resentment for you not being able to do the thing that you wanted to do because you were trying to appease them yo actually this came in a topic about um me and my mom i mean like in my family mm -hmm. about how me and my older sister we're very alike to the point that we don't really have that not empathy i wouldn't say empathy like we always see more in the logical aspects rather than sentimental. Because my two other sisters, they're, they're very caring. Like they care a lot. Like for mm. others, like for my cousin, for other people, like they care about like deeply. Mm -hmm. uh, me and my older sister, we not to that point. Like um, it's, it's always comes down to, to like money because like my family always being like in that aspect, like business size. But um, I, I don't remember how it came up on the topic. It was something about, like, my, my sister, like, whenever she does a favor, whenever she buys something, she charges the same exact price. Let's say it was, like, 20 and 10 cents. She charges 20 and 10 cents. Whereas me and my older sister, we will have charged 21. We will get, like, a little benefit for us. And we always, like, it's, it's kind of crazy because it is true. I'm not, I haven't been, like, that caring person since I was a kid. And even when I've been, I went to Buffalo, like, adjusting to, living alone, not being, seeing my parents or talking to my parents all the time, it wasn't hard for me. Like, also, like, when it comes to friends or, like, uh, acquaintances, me dropping a friend or just, like, going years not talking to them doesn't really affect me at all. Is that, mm. <laughs> that's kind of crazy. Like, I can go and not talk to you for, like, a whole year or two years, and then when you hit me up or you need my help, I will be there for you. But mm -hmm. I wouldn't pry about like, oh, I lose my friend and blah, 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 you know. I'm that type of person. I don't know how that makes me seem. I, no, I think but I, I feel like at a certain point, maybe that'll 
shine a negative light on you in some aspects, but I feel like mm-hmm. it's it's subjective, right? So it depends on the person because I'm sure maybe right. you don't show your caring nature that way, but you do it in another way, right? Uh-huh. Like you said, if they don't talk to you for two years, that's not a problem. But if they hit you mm-hmm. up and they're like, hey, I need your help, you'll be like, all right, what do you need? I'm not going to be like, you're not going to be like, no, we haven't talked for two years. We're not friends anymore. There you go. So yeah. In that sense, it's, it, again, it's a balancing of like that selfish and selfless nature. Because again, oftentimes you get too overly invested, too emotional, mm-hmm. and somebody doesn't talk to you for two years and all of a sudden you're like, no, we're not friends anymore because you didn't talk to me. There you go. Like, <laughs> listen, we have, we have lives to live and sometimes it just, we can't communicate and that's not really an issue. The main <laughs> thing is that you're able to, you know, foster a good relationship and be able to maintain that over years. Not just because we haven't talked over a couple of months or maybe a year or two that we can no longer be friends. Obviously, that's the case in the case of like somebody does you wrong. Obviously, mm-hmm. you drop that friend and that's a different story. But if nothing ended up happening. You kind of, you guys just stripped it apart. It's not really an issue. Um, I wouldn't that, say it's a problem. Yeah, no, definitely it's not a problem. But ultimately, what, where I'm going to with it is that no one cares. <laughs> so I don't know. It's just a mentality that I've been having like, lately. Like mm. uh, I care about my like my like um a standing like health health wise because i went to coronavirus and that was a bit tough going through that and i realized like you know like in order for me to take care of myself yeah i had to put priority on me and honestly i have a few couple friends like check on me here and there but ultimately like no one really cared like how i was doing you know because they weren't in that situation so, yeah they're, they're living their own lives their own little bubble exactly. So in a yeah. sense, you know, if everybody lives in their bubble, then, you know, focus on what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is that's it. What All do you right. think? <laughs> it was good. I mean, I can't complain. I, did, um, I feel like I'm in a same, similar boat. I, I Again, I don't really check up on people or people yeah. don't check up on me. At the end of the day, if you get in contact with me, we can have a full-blown conversation as if we never stop talking. It, right. it doesn't... That's- it doesn't hurt me. It doesn't take anything away from me because, again, mm-hmm. like, there's value always being added and never really taken away. Mm-hmm. It's when value is being taken away or when you feel like something's being taken away from you or you're building this resentment because you can't do this thing. That's where the problem becomes. But mm-hmm. when there's no value taken away, then it's not really an issue. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Ah, but that, I think that's, that's a good mentality to have, um, especially if you are about to take a big risk. Uh, maybe it's you know like creating your own thing your own business or your whatever it is going away for college or going away from college just doing whatever taking a major decision on your life or maybe i don't know whatever it is just think about that no one is going to care you're the only one who's going to care ultimately you're the one who's going to have to suffer if there's consequences you're the one who's going to have to suffer them but you're the one who takes responsibility for your actions there you go so um, that's where I was trying to go. Um, definitely, I would get some backslash on this. If somebody no, listens. No, no. <laughs> but nah, I, I, like ultimately, I don't really care. <laughs> it's the wording. It's the wording. Yeah, it's the wording. I think it's, it came out a little bit, a little bit like a dickhead. But that's me. Yeah. It's all right. It'd be like right. That. Yeah. All right. Let's jump right. into fitness. Um, using food apps. I think we covered this topic, didn't we? I think we slightly covered it, but we never really got in depth with it. Okay. I mean, it's not going to take that long anyway. It's take like five minutes at best. Cool. So, food apps. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's a recent thing that came... I mean, it's not really that recent. Uh, it's it's like probably like a, a decade or more. Um, but a lot of people have gotten into the mode of using food apps as a means to hit goals. It, uh, so, hypothetically, let's say you're the individual that's trying to lose weight. Mm-hmm. Using a food app is initially is critical simply because that's going to set a foundation in terms of you understanding what you're eating Mm -hmm. again a lot of times people don't really pay attention to the things that they're eating or you know they think they're having healthy foods and they probably are but just due to the overwhelming amount it becomes a negative effect regardless and it negates the positive aspects of eating good food because you're eating too much of it and you can kind of get lost there because you're just like, well, how much do I know is enough? Because maybe sometimes you're the individual that 
you don't stop eating until you feel satisfied. Maybe that's just consuming enough food or sometimes it's overindulging in food to the point you feel that satisfied and that's when you stop eating. But with the food app, here you kind of get a good idea as to where you should stop eating or continue eating because sometimes maybe you're under eating as well. Um, so I make two recommendations in terms of food apps that you can use. Uh, mentioned one before called uh, My Fitness Pal. So that right. one's pretty simple. Um, it tells you to put in some basic information, what are your goals, and then you take it from there. And then the other one is called Chronometer. So C H R O N O meter. That one I like a little bit better simply because that one tracks your micronutrients of all the foods that you're eating. So that's going to tell you if you're con consuming enough, um, if you're eating enough vitamins or taking in enough vitamins from the food that you're eating, taking in enough minerals. Uh, are you overdoing it as well? That's another thing, right? Because you can over, you can always overdo something. So definitely uh, recommend that one. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's a pretty simple concept. I would suggest if you're somebody that's never done it, definitely try it for like a month just to get yourself into a good mentality of what should I be eating? What shouldn't I be eating? What's good for me and what's not good for me? And then once you get a good idea, then you can start just eyeballing it. You can do portion sizing. That's usually the way I do it because I've already done it long enough. I can look at the amount of food on the plate and know, okay, this is enough for me. Um, instead of just going by how I feel. Because, you know, sometimes you can be pretty stressed out and then you just start overindulging in the food. And you never feel satisfied and you just keep eating. And that's how people end up getting overweight very quickly. But yeah. Right. Uh, in my opinion, what um, food apps are mainly, are they kind of like, they keep you accountable for what you're eating. I mean, mm -hmm. kind of gives you a estimate of the calories, you know, carbs and all the stuff, all the goodies, the baddies mm -hmm. that you're eating. So it keeps you accountable of what you're intaking on your, on your daily diet. Now, is this good? It's definitely good. It helps you micromanage or micro... Um, you know, the portions of what you're eating, but it's tedious, like it's fucking tedious. You mm -hmm. gotta be patient with it. You gotta take time before you eat or after you eat to in enter the numbers in order to actually the see the results. Now, I did try it for a couple months um, last year. I didn't see any change. I actually like what Randy mentions that, you know, you start with it and later on you kind of like, start being conscious about what you're eating because you become into this habit of doing it so frequently that you actually see like the portions, the amounts, and in your head, you already said, okay, this is almost like um, uh, 2,000 calories that I intake today, so I should stop and so on forth. So now I don't, I don't use that because especially uh, because I'm the person, I'm the man that who usually likes to cook in the house. It's so annoying to kind of like estimate. Measure everything, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's one of the drawbacks, in my opinion, for those that like to cook in the house. But for those that, you know, like they buy food outside um, or just like get um, vegetables or whatever, like in plastic, like containers that give you the, the facility or the, the easy, you know, to scan, then by all means you can use it and it's more mm -hmm. easy, easy to keep track of. But yeah. it hasn't worked for me in that aspect. Um, but definitely it's helpful though. It's definitely helpful. And I used to use my fitness ball, my fitness ball. It's really mm -hmm. good, really helpful. Um, there are there is a free version, but if you want like in more detail, in more depth, uh, you gotta pay I think, like monthly. Yeah, but that's that's with everything. But mm -hmm. again, you can use the free version, and if you're like, hey, I want to, you know, upgrade and see what else I can get, go ahead. Again, also the chronometer is the one that gives you this like the upgraded version of my fitness pal, and that one's also free. So you can try that one out. I like mm -hmm. it. Um. And that's it, man. Just uh, stick with the plan. Make a plan. Stick with it. Be consistent. And that's all you got to do. A lot of this is just about being consistent. It it's doesn't really... It's not even that much hard work. It's just the consistency aspect that makes it difficult. Um, but once you can get accustomed... Huh? I, I, I said, like, that's for everything. Like, consistency is for everything. Consistency with your workouts. Consistency with your training. Consistency with, with uh, whether you're starting a new habit like reading or going to bed early, everything is going to be challenging because of that, because it's hard to keep consistent. Yep. And, and once you can get that down, you're all set. You're good, yeah, absolutely. But um, right. I think that covers it. Um, mm -hmm. So it's good if you just are starting and you want to like learn how to micromanage and also like, um, what is it called? When you lean, no, meal plan. 
plant meal when you meal you know, planning mean uh, there you go um so it keeps you helps you keep track of the of what you're intaking and what you're putting on your body and like i always say what you put in your body is reflected in every aspect of your life um usually in your face because like if you're eating a lot of fatties like i've been doing because i'm stressed i've been getting like some pimples in over here yeah. no yeah. everything is a reflection whatever you eat usually it gets yeah. reflected in the body the way you are your mood the way your skin looks there's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that's affected with just your yeah. nutrition so that's why you want to make sure you're consuming the best stuff absolutely no definitely uh what it, what uh, uh you know health and diet and workouts and sleep are pretty much like what builds your health and your yep. uh, being fit like fit ultimately like you don't need yeah. to be ripped and muscular to be fit. You gotta have a good diet, good sleep, and decent amount of exercise or movement. Yep. You can get that. that down, and you would literally you avoid most, if not all, the the health complications that we have today in our modern society. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, without further ado, uh, let's jump right into the last topic, just to keep it um, not to keep it too large, long. I mean. Hey, because <laughs> uh, last time it, we went almost like an hour, and that's mm -hmm. yeah, it, it gets a little bit lengthy sometimes. All right, finance. How many stocks should you have in your portfolio? Now, uh, this will depend on whether your portfolio is day trade or long term. So we can just dive into the long term portfolio because I don't think you. Yeah, that, that's usually, that's what I was thinking of, just mm -hmm. like long term portfolios. Um, so I, I guess it depends, right? So with a long term portfolio, you could. Man, it really just depends how diversified you want to be. Um, so you can make portfolios that are more based off of growth, right? So those are portfolios that you're going to invest with stocks that are usually disruptive stocks, disrupted. So they're like, they're new to the game. They have brand new ideas. They're trying to change things up. So take like a Tesla, for example, in the automobile industry. These guys are a disruptive company simply because they came in with a completely new idea and absolutely dominated the market. They literally have the market cap of almost all car manufacturers combined. So that's the kind of thing that you would be focused on with a growth portfolio. Companies that are new, companies that have good ideas and have a lot of growth potential for the long term. Um, I'm going to go something a little bit more stable because obviously with those growth portfolios, they usually fluctuate a lot. You have days where things go up massively and days that things go down massively. Or right. weeks or months. It's never, it's not all an even ride up. It's always a roller coaster, but generally with an uptrend, uptrending pattern. Um, if you want something a little bit more stable, a little more consistent, not as crazy gains, but not as crazy as losses, you go with something that has a more diversified set of stocks within a broad range of markets or rather uh, sectors. So, you know, you can do things like finance, energy, um, commodities. You can do things like uh, in terms of, like what's popping off right now, EV markets, right? Electric car mar uh, markets, um, technology. So, you know, you got your hospitality, airline or industry, uh, travel industry. So airlines, hotels, um, there's, there's so many things I can't really name it off the top of my head, but the more right. diversified you are, obviously the less profit potential, but the more stability that you get and- and if you do it right, it's a really consistent uptrend without really minimal downsides. Um, yeah, I would say that the, there's more, but obviously that's that's where you want to start off from. Right. Uh, so for my end, I agree with Randy in some aspects that what, what he mentions about diversifying your portfolio. And depending on that, uh, how you want to hold or like the amount of um, companies you want to hold in your portfolio. Now, uh, we, uh, I was reading the question right now. You said shares, oh, stocks. Okay, so we're talking about companies. Now, that will depend on, well, the way that I have mine, it's on uh, low, you know, small portions of risk, or not risky, or like stable companies. We, uh, they, we call it blue chips uh, companies such as Amazon, Google, Netflix, uh, Apple, uh, Tesla. All of these are blue chips companies. These are established companies. All you gotta worry about this is how they're performing on the next quarter, how they're gonna perform on like you know on future uh, developments or future uh, inversions, all that investments. Like 
you that's all you got to worry about these companies you don't have to worry about them going bankruptcy or going you know um losing all like a lot of market because they dominate the market at this point so those are blue chips you want to hold at least uh five companies in my opinion depending on average like total right now i'm holding uh 27 companies on my portfolio but uh five of these are blue chip companies now the other i would say 10 to 15 companies are mid-sized companies these are you know emerging companies such as uh, like EV markets, um, e-commerce. Uh, I have Jumia on it. Gold, um, no gold. Sorry, that's another section. And other companies are like like a little bit riskier, but at the same time they're very promising companies. Now that's if you want to invest in the long term. That's all about long term. It's for me. Like I see potential in these companies, and I think they're gonna do very very great in the next uh, five to a decade, five to ten years. I mean. So I'm holding a large amount of them. Now, the last portion, the last five to uh, seven companies that I have on my portfolio, will that be 27? Well, I don't know the math, but the last portion, the last small portion, it will be ETFs. So I have ETFs on um, Berkshire, um, Berk eh. I always keep pronouncing this wrong, Berkeley, 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 Berk that um, Warren Buffett. Hashire? Yeah, yeah, the, the hedge fund. Anyways. Like they, they have really diverse portfolio. Uh, they always keep changing every every single time. They keep adding or reducing positions, but you don't have to worry about that because you're only holding a certain amount of them. So I'm holding a few positions, like a large portion of my, of my portfolio on that. I have ETFs on financials. I have ETFs on real estate. And I was checking, I have finance, I have ETFs on uh, what it was. I had another one. Oh, I had an ETF on gold as well. So usually I don't invest, like I said, I don't really invest on commodities, but back in the, like a like few months ago, gold was really, really cheap. So I decided to jump in and so far it's been stable, nothing crazy, but yeah. And the last thing, last, last, last one, I would say like this one will be the minimum is the companies that you think are riskier, like companies that can go bankruptcy, companies that are riskier, but the pay are gonna be hella hella high. So on that end, I have I have actually Jumia will jump into this category that I mm -hmm. think about because Jumia is a new one. And actually, I just have Jumia. I sold uh, another one that I had. But yeah, so it's it's pretty much that's why I diversify my portfolio. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, first certain amount you want to have blue chips like Randy mentioned, like the stable companies. Uh, large portions is like mid-sized companies, uh, new companies that are a bit riskier, but they have a lot of potential. And then the last section will be uh, ETFs um, or like something, ETFs or just commodities and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in total, my portfolio is 27. Um, I do plan to increase a little bit more to certain companies that I've been looking on mm -hmm. to 30, but we will see how that goes. Maybe sell it actually because... Uh, yeah. Right. So with me, I have about 55, I think, total. Um, oh, okay. So that the reason for that is because I'm broadly diversified across many aspects. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I think in total, I can count about like 15 different sectors or sections that I'm invested in, um, all ranging from technology to currencies to crypto to uh, I don't have crypto. Oh, yeah, I forgot. car manufacturing, I airlines, right? I mean, pretty much everything that mm -hmm. I see that has good potential. And can just, you know, go on an absolute tear and just make a lot of growth. And mm -hmm. I'm constantly rebalancing, right? So it's never like I'm just buying and just leaving it there. I'm obviously looking at performance to see which ones are doing well, which ones are not. And changing things out. Because, you know, you don't really want to be holding things that aren't actually making you money. That's the whole purpose of this, investing in general. So, um, yeah, I would say any, you can hold anywhere from about 10 so like, I feel like a, a solid portfolio would be about 20 to 30 stocks. Yeah. That's about like medium risk. Mm -hmm. 10 stocks or less, that's that's high risk. You're definitely not really diversified well enough mm -hmm. to take any hits if something goes wrong. Yeah, and you, some... Uh, actually, I was going to cut you off. Uh, you can definitely take advantage of the what you do with the partial, like the... the, the partial uh, shares, yeah. Partial, partial shares. Fractional. Fractional. fractional shares, there you go. 
because um, that way you can increase a lot on the positions that you can take. For me, I don't like them. I, I don't know. So that's, that's why you're at 27 and I'm at 55, right? Yeah. I'm investing in 55 different stocks and you're only at 27 simply because you buy shares, like actual full shares as opposed to me buying fractional shares, which gives me more right. diversity. And, you know, it kind of makes, it gives me the freedom to build the portfolio the way I want to, as mm -hmm. opposed to being limited with the amount of money that I have. Thus, I can only buy a certain amount of stocks. Um, so yeah, I, I liked what I have built. It's pretty good. Um, it keeps it, whatever, whenever an industry gets hit hard, it doesn't hit me that hard because I'm so diversified that everything else kind of just keeps it up. And if everything's moving up, then everything goes up. So it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. Oh, definitely. I, I definitely agree with you. I should have started doing that more often about fractional shares. I have something that's called uh, reinvestment of dividends. So they actually give me like, for example, Apple, uh, recently I got that, like that reinvestment. So I have mm -hmm. like a 0.03%, like, you know, the actual amount I have and then 0.0. .0. It's kind of mm -hmm. annoying. Like for me, I personally, I like to keep track of like the growth that the company makes. So fractional shares usually doesn't give you like a, like an understanding on that. Well, right. kind of, does. you just gotta put time on it. I have, well, definitely this winter break, I would start diversifying my portfolio a little bit better. Because, um, but yeah, other than that, my portfolio has been performing really good this past mm -hmm. month. So, uh, Solid. I, yeah, uh, one thing that I did that I like, one change that I did was I, um, remember I had almost 40% of my money on tech companies. I reduced that to 25 to 30% now. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. that has been a really like a huge advantage. I reinvested on some in like the um, hospitality that you mentioned. Mm -hmm in some airlines. I increased my position on Boeing because I I always, you know, I, I'm so, well, Boeing made me lose so much money, but at the same time, I'm still trusting this company uh, that, air, that airlines manufacture, the airplane manufacturer. It's only one of two. You can't really compete. Yeah, exactly. So um, I'm hoping that it's going to jump really soon because like their, their planes are starting to fly again, which is really good. Um, also invested on some one of my recent ones is going to be which one was it? I forgot which one was it. No, it was Jumia. I'm really proud of Jumia, bro. Because I, I know caught, I caught it uh, under 30. Right now, it's sitting on 37. Uh, Neo has disappointed me a lot. Um, I increased my in Neo. Yeah, uh, I must see if I can reduce that a little bit. But we will see how that goes like with the news and all that. But yeah, oh, we can jump into a news update actually now. Mm -hmm. so, so actually, we can jump right into the <clears throat> what's happening with Neo. Go ahead. And the EV sector. So what happened with Neo was that they the company sold off 68 million shares, I believe, yeah. in order to raise capital. Um, so the whole purpose of that is to help expand the company. And recently, they made it some sort of contract deal with... Uh, industrial production company in China to build more factories or rather more facilities to swap batteries. So again, their method of EV compared to Tesla is instead of charging your battery for two to three mm -hmm. hours, they just swap your battery out, which usually takes about three, three to five minutes. So, you know, it's like going to a gas station and filling up your tank. It's instead of that, you kind of swap out the battery and it's a similar idea. Right. Um, it gets so in building. Sorry, it gives them an advantage over Tesla in the way that Tesla, you have to buy a whole new vehicle to update your battery rather than Neo's vehicles that you can just switch the battery and get an upgraded yeah, one. And if they come up with new stuff, you know, you can just upgrade the battery and not the car and, you know, mm -hmm. you retain most of its value. If not, it's the same thing. So on that end, that's why they're, there's so much hype behind the company. But again, it's a relatively new company. They still need to go through all their... Um, growing pains, so that's going to take a little bit of time. But again, this, there's a lot of upside, a lot of long-term potential with that. And even though this this was a pretty decent pullback, it stabilized right around 40, 40 bucks. So that's good. Um, yeah, at this yeah, point, you just kind of got to wait it out. I think it's finding a support on the 40s right now. Because mm -hmm. I was checking the charts this morning, and what it looks like, it's it's going to maintain that until like at least the end of the year depending on how the last the, the last quarter did how they did on the last quarter they might start jumping a little bit higher 
but it mm-hmm. trump i mean it grows so much this year that i don't see it um growing any further by the end of this year that's yeah, my but on, the, on the flip side we have tesla which oh, you know we're still mm-hmm. we are now right now we're killing it which is great um mm-hmm. And again, we're still waiting for that S and P 500 inclusion, which happens on the 21st. The next so week, we still have a week um, <clears throat> of just people pretty much buying it. And then once we get into the S and P 500, there's going to be even more buying um, pressure onto the company, which sure. doesn't necessarily mean that the stock is price is always going to go up. But mm-hmm. at least for the short period of time, um, it's just going to keep going up. There's just there's nothing not stopping it to keep continuing its climb, unless you mm-hmm. know. Something happens to Elon, or Elon says something, says a tweet or something again. He drops the share price. Well, uh, I think one of the biggest catalysts for its growth this weekend was the announcement that Tesla headquarters is moving to Texas. So mm. that's actually really good news because that means they're gonna cut off a lot of money they're paying on taxes in California state. Um, so that leaves some money hang, uh, hanging, you know, in the company that they can reinvest into the company and. Uh, maybe invest more in the uh, like the AI that we were mentioning last week. So that that's one of the things, the good news that came. That's why it kind of rose a, a, a little bit last week and mm-hmm. during the weekend. As it's but, standing right now, we're up five percent on the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really good run. Um, Tesla has a lot of potential, in my opinion, but they're not dominating the market fully. Um, but when it comes to market size, they have grown so much that they have surpassed. I think it's five of the major automaker companies all combined, like in market cap, which is really mm-hmm. good. Uh, in other news, we had an outrage, outrage on Google's uh, servers. So there was, um, I don't know if you were using Gmail, you were using Google Docs, YouTube, or whatever it was. Uh, they use this Google servers. They were down this morning. Um, so we saw a, a bit of a drop on their, on their, on their um, I mean, on their, on their, on their stock as well. It kind mm-hmm. of, yeah, it's down uh, 0.56 right now, which is really, mm-hmm. you know, it's a, it's a big company. So 0.56, it's a huge drop for them. And sadly, I got in last week on Google again, but we'll see what happens with that. I mean, Google's a giant. There's always yeah. going to be growth going on. Well, there's many, many, many new laws that... Okay, cool. Uh, many uh, like new com- like new countries, nations, they're actually battling against Google and Facebook because of the monopoly activities that they have or monopoly kind of like um, how you can practices. Call it? Practices. There you go. Yeah, because for example, the EU, uh, EU uh, European Union, they actually start kind of like um, a lawsuit against them. They're actually passing into a law. Um, so we're going to see some effect on that, especially here in the U.S. If like uh, some sort of law is passed regarding that issue, face, uh, breaking Facebook and uh, Google, mm-hmm. they're going to get hurt. They're definitely going to get hurt and they have to find an approach to overcome that. And there's going to be, you know, room for competitions. So we also have to be in the lookout for new companies or emerging companies on that, on that, on that aspect. For example, Junia. In my opinion, has a lot of potential. Uh, similar to Mercado Libre in South America, they are kind of like Amazon. So they're competitors to Amazon, similar to Alibaba in China. So, you know, there's competition right there and that's healthy for the economy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Other news on your end? No, uh, I was saying that there's a lot of, uh, I mean, the markets are performing pretty well. There's a positive outlook on the vaccine rolling out mm-hmm. and then stimulus yeah. talks again. So, you know, everybody's kind of, you know, getting a little bit more comfortable putting in more money into the markets and kind of just, you know, generally having a positive outlook on what the future holds. So, you know, that generally tends to put everything on an uptrend. So, you know, hopefully everything kind of works out. We get an actual stimulus coming in soon. That'll help a lot of people. And then see how these vaccines roll out and how that performs. Hopefully they do well. And, you know, kind of just get past this and try to get back to some new normal that uh, doesn't involve us just being cooped up at home, not doing anything, not socializing, not getting outside, getting sun, you know, well, being it's human. Well, it's winter now, but still, you can get some sun. Okay. Yeah, other than that, Airbnb, Phil, it dropped from the 140-ish 
Right now it's sitting on 127. I'm debating whether to jump in right now or let it drop a little bit more and jump in drop. later. I feel like it's going to uh, drop more. Yeah, I feel, I feel like it's going to drop a little bit more because, you know, especially with COVID cases rising, there's potential in that. But I still believe Airbnb has a lot of potential, especially if the big companies, the big tech get break up, uh, Amazon will be next. Um, other than that, uh, Roblox announced that it's going to be postponing its IPO until next year. Well, yeah, that's what it is. Facts. I'm I'm waiting for that because Roblox is gonna be a huge competition for the gaming industry in the gaming industry for micro uh, Minecraft, which is I think is owned by Microsoft. Yeah, is it? It is right. Yeah. 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 Um. Well, Sony, Sony, who recently purchased actually uh, Crunch Crunchful, the anime Crunchyroll, Crunchyroll yeah, from AT and T. Uh, that's a lot of potential for anime. I watch my anime illegally, allegedly. Definitely shouldn't have said that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, allegedly. But other than that, uh, we are still waiting on Washington to settle a stimulus deal. Uh, last week, the U uh, EU finalized a 13-figure plan, $2.2 trillion for the EU, EU uh, economy. We will see how big the package is for... The United States, because actually the United States is pretty big, so we have, we need the money. The economy is struggling. Oh yeah, I'm a I'm a bleep. I'm a beep. I'm a how you call that? Like beep beep on what mm. I said. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, cool, cool, cool. Other than that. Yeah, that's good. it. Yeah, it's gonna be a long week for me. I have two finals, two papers. After after this, I will be chilling. I will be working more in my. Um, Almost done, bro. Yeah, definitely was, bro. working on, you know, more into this, into the podcast, into my portfolios, and really excited Other for that. Projects. I'm looking forward to that. Need a break from all this math. Other than that, guys, I will see you tomorrow. All right, peace out. Deuces.